the mighty JMJ for pedals and effects. And Justin, I think we met in the 90s. For sure, 90s, 90s. But the question is, when is, is it early 90s? Mid 90s. It's, it's mid 90s, yeah, mid-90s. for sure. When did you, because I was in a band called Pet after Justin right. was playing in Pet. And right. I think that's how we met. Yeah. Um, I had left Pet at that point to go play with Beck. It was actually, right. I was, it was 95, 96. It was right in there. Right, right. And um, yeah, I made the, the record, that first record with them. Was there a second right. record? No. Oh, you guys didn't make a second record. Okay, cool. Right. But then that related, the pet was amazing because it got parlayed into that incredible relationship you have with Lisa that's gone on so long since then. Yeah, me and Lisa. Lisa from Big Sur. And she was the singer in Pet. Yep. And good friends with Justin and me. So, um, and then that's how we met. And I remember seeing you play, the first time I saw you play was with Beck downtown LA. I think it was in maybe little Tokyo area oh outside outside yeah was it a, yeah it was a benefit it was a benefit for autism wow yeah I remember that yeah my our friend Ross Harris who had that band Sukia oh right he put that on oh and wow because his kid has autism and he put that whole event on it was great I remember there's some other cool bands playing that day yeah that yeah. was an awesome show so that's yeah. well, the first time I got to see you play wow. and so I've always known Justin to be very innovative on the instrument on the bass very into bass too I've always thought like you know like because I, I know that you started going into production and I but you've always maintained like a real commitment to your instrument. I mean you're on talk bass, which I think is awesome. Thanks. And that's a really great website for bass players. It's I mean I'm sure a lot of people who watch my videos are know what talk bass is. And Justin has a is it a column or a chat? I guess you call it my sub forum or sub forum or whatever. Right. And basically I'm there to talk about anything. Like it's so totally carte blanche. I don't really have any limitations about what we talk about, but what generally kind of seems to come up is everything from sort of like career advice, which right. is, as you know, that can be a little tricky to be giving people career advice because right. you look at your own life and you're sort of like always assessing your own mistakes and things like that, <laughs> yeah, and regrets. Right. Or sure, whatever. sure. So I don't, you know, it's a little bit of a like a, a tricky yeah. thing to get into. But you know, there's some stuff you can impart if you if you feel confident enough about it in that department. And then you know, sometimes gear my gear other gear to some degree i try not to be super gear oriented because i don't always i'm not always on top of like what the newest stuff is right so like if someone says like uh what impedance should i put you know to this head with these two cabinets with the six tens and the eight fifteens and like i don't know you know (laughs) i don't know i just don't know you know so i refer them to the other talk this forum which is like the amps forum like because there's cool stuff on there yeah like there's guys that hang out and they're like i know there's there's dudes who know about every amp in, in the history of bass amplification right. and like sort you out. Right. Same thing with effects. Like there's generally dudes on there that know a lot more about effects than me. But um, my effects knowledge tends to be really particular. Like there's things I know when I buy them, I really get into them and I know them. But I don't know about every rad like fuzz or ring modulator or everything that comes out. I just can't keep track of it. Right. Right. Like, right. Didn't it seem like maybe even five to ten years ago it was easier to track the new stuff. That yeah, came out. sure. Just because like there was less boutique makers, there was right. less quantity, and um, you know everyone didn't have the bright idea to do like a um, a big muff clone with a, a blend control and a mid range right. knob. Right. You know, and now there's several options that do oh. that, and I don't, yes. I can't track with all that. Right. So there's that. There's you, and then there's the effects form. Right. But that's the source right. for that stuff. Right. Um, but yeah. Anyway, on that form that I do, it's it's all kinds of stuff. You know. We talk about surprisingly like personal things too sometimes. Like people oh, ask cool. me like, so yeah. you know, how do you reconcile touring with a family and like, wh- what's your strategy with keeping a good relationship with your kid and right. your wife and all that kind of stuff? And I, I like talking about that stuff. I don't I don't pretend to know everything about it, but right. you know, maybe in, it's it's all about a conversation because when those things get started. Other people chime in with really brilliant stuff, and I'm always like, wow, why aren't they running the forum? Honestly, because <laughs> some people say some stuff that yeah. you're like, that's rad. They're on there, and, and there's some smart people out there that are right. actually trying to help each other out. So right. it's kind of a cool spot to I to definitely get on there. I've read your stuff. I have my friend Yannick's on there. Yeah. Um, there's some really good stuff. Uh, but if you want to, you know, hit Justin up with a question. By all means. Talk Base has it. So the one thing I wanted to get into, though, was that... Justin, awesome bass player and super musical, but we are musicians. And so Justin understands a lot about 
music and bands and, and, and making music. And he's definitely done some really interesting things recently with production. He's produced Paramore. Record. Yeah, I've been kind of all over the shop. Okay. M83. M83, yeah. Um, and so you just, like, you know, I think it's interesting to, you know, kind of how you started going into that. Was it something that you wanted to do or, or was it something that you always knew you were going to do? I think I thought that maybe it'd be something I'd do when I get, like, a lot older. <laughs> but I kind of fell into it. Like, um, in 2009, I had produced a bunch of records, like, one-offs here and there uh, for years. Like, I produced... Um, Ken Andrews' last solo album, Ken Andrews from Failure, I did his right. last solo record, and, and a few other little things, like this band called Division Day, cool LA band, um, just bits, right? But the Nine Inch Nails tour ended in 2009, and um, that's when Trent Reznor decided that the band would be done. He's sort of like, I'm retiring, Nine Inch Nails right. as an entity is, is over. And um, in the summer previously, I had been approaching M83, because I just was so enamored with their approach and the vibes that they create and everything. Right. I, I, found, I, I was such a deep fan that I sort of blithely said to him in an email, I found them, and I just sort of said, I want to produce you guys. And it seemed a little bit like a pipe dream. Right. But I, and I normally am never that assertive, but I just did it, yeah. and I thought it'd be an interesting thing to see how the response was. And then I ended up meeting the band in England when Nine Inch Nails was playing a festival that's that in the summer of 2009, and then we sort of hit it off, and then they moved to L.A., and we just started making a record. Awesome. And, and then it came out, and we didn't even know what it was, how it would resonate, how it would, what, what sort of any kind of cultural significance it would have, if any. Right. And it ended up being really... Um, well received and and, That's, and and did well. Yes, it definitely. And and I think you know, like you you know, you you go and you do that, and it's not just because, like obviously you know you went after it, but you understand because you've been in enough musical situations. You're just, there's there's a comprehension of how things operate successfully. Mm -hmm. I think, and like you've been around Trent, you've been around Beck, and and you made you had your own band. I'm a robot. Yeah, and and so and you, and there's so many yeah. elements that you understand about being in a musical situation that I think you could lend to artists and that's kind of things that's why I think it's just so logical you know there's, there's some logic to it that I'm not I wasn't aware of until like I'd done after the M83 record I did a bunch of other records like I did I did um, Paramore I did Tegan and Sarah I did uh, this band Neon Trees I did um, right. yeah, true. uh uh the Naked and Famous that band from New Zealand um, just a bunch of stuff in a row like three solid years of records and um I think I started to realize later on that the bass player can actually, especially a bass player who's been in the in the mix with so many different things, actually has kind of a cool vantage that maybe other people don't have as much right. of. And I I started to see that when I'm playing bass at my best, I hope I'm listening to a lot of things at the same time. Right. And you're sort of like the. Um, Sometimes you're the conductor right. of several different, you know, trains that are all sort of moving forward, and right. you're, you're sort of trying to um, find a way to make them all like live harmoniously together. And how the drummer plays to a singer, and right. how a guitar player interfaces with the keyboards, and somehow it all goes through you at some point. Right, like that sort of translation between the different players right you know and I started noticing it more and more over time that gosh this is something that I need to be really responsible about because sometimes people are relying on you the bass player right to like figure out how things are supposed to be compatible and married or whatever right so I guess I figured that um that would work in the producing environment on the other side of the glass, you know? Right. And plus doing a lot of different styles of music, like just sessions too. Right. And movies yeah, and all that kind of stuff. It just right. it informs that in a cool way. And I, 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 I still think it's a little new to me. Right. But that's what I'm seeing is the thing. And I, it's, it's hard for me to say this without sounding like I'm not modest right. or that I'm being vain. But, it, but, it's, but I think I, that's the strength that I'm trying to um, put my finger on, like, that's the thing that makes it possible, is 
the hearing of, of things right. all going on at the same time and understanding their place. Right. So I, I, I'm taking what you're saying, and I, and I really think that a bass player, like, you know, we're the guys who are sitting with the drummer in the rhythm section, and then we play bass, which is string instrument, like guitar is. You know, you have keyboards, they have synth, bass, low end, as your left hand is. I mean, yeah. yes, you hit chords, but you're, you know, and then, you know, because a lot of times you're doing the bass lines and playing keys, but you under, you have this comprehension, a really strong comprehension of everything that those guys are doing. And you have, you know, guitar players, a lot of guitar players just get so focused on their instrument and their tone and whatever. And I, and I think that we just have a comprehension that most of the rest of the dudes don't have. And I'm not saying they don't because every yeah, instrument has right. a guy, you know. But yeah. but I think that it is a it is a perspective that I don't know if any of the other guys get because like you know Maybe not. you know especially because we're in the rhythm section. I just think because it's just so vital to making stuff sound really you know glued or something yes, or what yes. like yeah yeah that's that's the thing i guess i'm trying to say is 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 getting everything to to sit well together where everything's not stepping on each other yes. is is something that is like the life pursuit like how to get as much musical excitement and information going on and, right. and people still feeling like they're they're really expressing themselves in an ensemble right. but somehow doing it in a way that taste always factors in right that's like what we're still trying to do right and and it's i think bass players have a really good chance to be producers because of that very reason right as they get on with their craft you know and i i think it works well for them some yeah. great producers have been um bass players historically yeah i mean yeah. uh we're uh cedric's band zavala's that we're in like we actually have dave fridman fridman doing yeah. it and he's a bass player yep and so you know it, and, and it's so funny because i'll say I've said a couple things that I thought, like, I think he means this, and we, we need clarification. Then he comes back and he says, oh, yeah, you're more like The Who. And I was like, but that's because the bass players definitely know The Who because exactly. they're muscle, you know? And so sure. I was just like, ah, oh, we're connected in some way. You know, he's, it's you know, great. the bass minds or whatever. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, and I, I really think, too, that it's, it's you know, we're bass or so we're not really ever trying to make sure that our stuff's loud in the no, mix. We're it's not. not like a guitar player. No. I used to be, maybe. <laughs> when I was first starting out, I'm like, you know, I want to dominate this, you know? Yeah. Wanna, just because I have four strings, I'm not limited, and, you know, I'm going to shred everybody or whatever. <laughs> you know? But that's, you know, that, that gets tempered over time. You start to realize your function. Right. And that function becomes like an honor. Becomes right. an honor that you take on. Right. And you right. get stoked on that thing of that simplicity of just trying to help everybody glue together in, in a common right. goal somehow. Right. right. You know? For sure. And I and I, I found myself like getting away from a certain even bass sounds. I started getting so into flat ones because I was like, man, it just oh, yeah. just stays off everything. Yeah. It has it lives in its own little world and it just you know, so like I love my instrument now of flats. I, pr I pretty much play flats all the time yeah. unless I'm playing fretless. Okay. You know, and it, it might the opposite. I use rounds. Right, on exactly. I use rounds on fretless. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but I just I just love flats so much. I just just I just wanted to sit in so well. I mean, like ACDC records, all flat ones. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some there's some surprising stuff that's flats. I was just thinking of another one the other day. But yeah, there's a bunch of bass players. Oh, that, Sabbath. Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden. That's right. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Flats. Like, whoa, really? Yeah. But yeah, but there's something about the the point of right. the sound that cuts through really great on flats. That's right. insane. You and, know? and we're not jumping in on the cymbals, you know, with the yeah. high end. The cymbals, we're, we're, right. not, we're off the bass drum. And it's all, that's what I mean. Like, you just had it, understanding the full perspective of what comes through speakers when you're listening to music. And, and so I just, I wanted to know, you know, like, the, you know, what pulled you to production. Yeah. And so I think it's interesting, too, that, that the bands that you work with, you know, it's bass. Is it, is it something that, like, do you come in and play on it or do you... No, it just depends. I mean, mostly they're just bands. But right. like with Tegan and Sarah, I played all the bass. Right. But I'm, when I'm in the studio as a producer, like I, I'm obsessed with keyboards. Right. And, and I'm obsessed with treating things right. like guitars and bass with treatments either in the box with plugins or with pedals. Right. So those are, the, those are my specialties. You right. Know? Right. I, I make beats and I'm okay at it and I, I do that. But my specialty is like embellishing a track with keyboards that have a really specific function like right. taking something that might be a little dry sounding and making it more cinematic or something like right. that you right. know and that's fun i don't know where that comes from but that's just maybe just my 
musical taste or what I like listening to. Right, right. From way back or right, something. Right, So right. that's part of it. But then the other thing is the thing we're talking about, which is the sort of like how to make uh, everyone have an, a place in a right. mix. Right, you know? right. And so, you know, anyway, Justin's, you know, got so much more coming up. You got Beck, Coachella, and um, any records producing in the future yeah the, I just there's this band from Orange County that's actually really good called Young the Giant they're great and and I just finished their record that comes out next month um, I'm starting a new record with M83 the follow-up awesome. to that last one and then um, Beck has probably two records coming out this year one that's wow. in February and that features like the original band that we're all right. playing together again and, and we're gonna be playing live and I think it's also important I have the luxury of being able to play live still right like I, yes. I, I can, I'm somehow Right, able to balance these two things in my life, and I count my blessings for that because that's huge. Yeah. Like being able to step away, play some bass, do that role, really remember your place in that role, have fun with it, and then go to the more complex thing of the bigger picture producing thing. It's it's really uh, a luxury. That's an awesome year. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, definitely awesome year. So, Justin, thank you for coming yeah, in. Huddles and effects. Pleasure.